Fixer family, it's Charmin, and today I am bringing you my best 20 DIY projects in 2020. Welcome to Fixin' 2. So we're gonna start by making our faux birch candles. And I'm just using a couple of candles from Ikea, some Waverly chalk paint in the color white, some of my gel stain, and some tools here. I'm gonna take a little crafter's knife and begin by just cutting in random lines all the way around the candle here into the wax and you want to make them you know a little deep because we're going to be putting on this stain and we want it to kind of get down in there and of course after you kind of got the lines where you want it you want to go back in and kind of make um, what I would call like a forward C and a backward C and a little mark in the middle of that just to kind of look like knots in the wood and I'm just using another little tool I have just to kind of make some of the places a little bit bigger. And you just kind of do a random pattern. So then I'm taking a sponge um, paintbrush here and I'm just gonna take some of my stain and go all the way around the candle, making sure that I really get it into those lines that I created. Once you have done that and you got it, you're gonna just go in and wipe off with a paper towel or a cloth or whatever and you see how the stuff um, the gel is getting down into those um, cracks or those lines that I put in there now this is just a process to get it to the desired look that you want and I'm going in a little deeper with my little knife a little more stain and once I get that then I'm gonna go in with my Waverly chalk paint and you dry brush it on, you kind of wipe it off, you add more stain, and you just kind of go back and forth until you get that desired look that you are going for. And this really does create a faux birch wood look to these candles. And it brings out that rustic look to them. And I really love this at Christmas time. So while those are being set aside to dry, I'm going to take these two wood rounds that I got from the Dollar Tree and we're going to do some stuff to them to get them ready to go on top of our candle stands or our little stands, however you want to look at it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to fill in these little holes that were there at the top and I'm just using some little um, dry text putty stuff that is pink and then when it's white it's dry. So we're just going to fill that in and then let that dry. So now we're going to take three of the very popular Dollar Tree glass candlesticks, some super glue fix-all and hot glue, and we're going to take and glue these together to get that short-term, long-term hold, putting top to top, if that makes sense. Setting that aside and going ahead and preparing our wood rounds to go on top of these. Now you'll sand down the area where you put the little spackling in there to fill those holes. Now guys, I kept this in here because I wanted to show you where I had kind of made a mistake and learned from my mistakes. You'll see where that dot is where we had put the spackling in and I realized that I needed to sand the entire surface of this wood. And that leaves you um, an area to where you're able to put your stain in there and it take all the way around. So the one that I messed up on, I set it aside and let the stain on it dry completely. And then I took the sandpaper and I sanded it really good and it did take the sand, uh, excuse me, it did take the stain really well after I did that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stain all of the edges all the way around and both sides. As 
as you see, I took both of the candlesticks outside and painted them with Rust-Oleum's Flat Protective Enamel in the color brown. And I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to do a dry brush effect on both of the candlesticks. And this is super simple. Just keep your brush strokes going um, from top to bottom all one way and just let it highlight those uh, raised areas and it just turns out so stinking cute super rustic i absolutely love the way these turned out Once you have both of these done and they're completely dry, it's time to add the wood rounds to the top of each one of our candlesticks. And we're using the Fix All Super Glue and also hot glue for that short term, long term hold. And we'll just put that on there and then flip the candlestick right on top of it. Now it's time to bring some Christmas festive to this. And I'm taking the Dollar Tree garland and just measuring out, basically it's the size of the, the uh, wood round twice. And uh, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about when I go to measure it and put it all together here. You just kind of measure it around the wood piece and then just wrap it around itself and it usually goes around twice there and just twisting it on itself to make a little wreath. I wanted to make my little candles kind of stand up a little bit higher than the little wreath and so I just used some of those wood blocks from the crafter square at Dollar Tree right up underneath it. Now it's time to bring a little bit more Christmas to this little wreath here and I'm using some pieces from picks that I've had left over to kind of add some a little bit more rustic Christmas flair to each one of these wreaths and just using some hot glue and uh, bringing it to life. So we're going to take two of these wood signs, these thankful and grateful signs that they had for Thanksgiving, and we're going to use some chalk spray paint and create this cute little um, planter, I guess you can call it. <laughs> we're just going to kind of take some things out of the inside of it and using some hot glue, we're just going to glue this together and then take it outside and spray paint it. Now I tried to take the paper off of it and um, yeah, it really didn't do very well. So my suggestion would be to leave the paper on it, but ultimately it turned out okay because I sanded where I had taken the paper off. So now that we have spray painted it and we've got that where we put the two pieces together, we're gonna do something with it as well. But before we get that done, I'm gonna go ahead and put some styrofoam in there so that we can put our picks and all the fun Christmas stuff that we're gonna put in it. So taking a piece of this red and black buffalo check ribbon, I'm just gonna hot glue it all the way around and creating that little band around the center of it and then taking another piece and making a cute little bow and then I'm going to take some twine and create a little twine bow with it and stick it all right there on the front. So now we're ready to make it all Christmassy and I'm going to take another piece of this garland that we got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut a piece off of it and then take the very ends and fold just probably about a half an inch down and stick that into the floral foam 
and that creates a nice base and covers the styrofoam that's down there. And then we'll begin to just embellish it with different picks that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree. Now guys, I love the red birds um, for Christmas. I love to decorate with them. And Dollar Tree had these beautiful little clip um, picks and I just, I fell in love with them and I definitely am using this little bird in here and just, you know, sticking them down into the floral foam. I had to move the bird over a little bit. He's giving me a little bit of trouble of wanting to lean, but we got it done and I think that this turned out so adorable. If this is the first time to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Consider sticking around and becoming a part of the Fixer family. We would love to have you. In the new year, 2021, I will be bringing you new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time new videos go live. So today's video is in collaboration with other YouTubers and is hosted by my friends Heidi from Heidi Sambel DIY and Lynette from DIY Beauty on Purpose. Now I will have their channels linked down below, so make sure that you go and check out their, ch their channels. You won't be disappointed. And also there will be a playlist linked down below so that you can head over and see everyone else's best 20 um, projects for 2020. It will be so awesome and so much inspiration. I am looking forward to meeting all of you here on YouTube and also over on my Instagram at fixin2al. Would love to meet you over there as well. And I am looking forward to the new year. So let's go ahead and get back into these fun projects. So the first thing we're gonna do is of course open up our gel stain and I'm using a piece of a microfiber cloth and I'm just going to use that and begin to stain our little houses. We're gonna stain the outside edge, the top edge, and of course the inside of each one of these little houses. Now you'll see that when I get to the top, I have found that there was some dried glue on here and we're just gonna take some sandpaper and anywhere that you come across stuff like that, just take some you know, medium grit sandpaper and begin to just sand it off and then take and touch up with your stain and it should look just fine. Also, when we began to rub and put it on the inside, um, my fingers couldn't get into the little corners and close to the inside edge there, and so I used a flat head screwdriver to put on the rag and to get it down in there really well. And once we get it all stained, of course, we're gonna take a paper towel and clean off um, the excess around the edges. And we're gonna do the other two and let those dry. So now that they are completely dry, we took um, some of our Waverly, Waverly chalk paint and using a small brush, I began to do like, like you would do when you're painting a room and that was cutting in around the outer edges because I wanted to get, of course, a good line there and it was gonna be too tedious to go in <laughs> with some tape to tape it off, but I went in and did that. It's a little time consuming, but we got our first coat on and I wound up going in and doing a total of three coats of paint to cover up all of the patterns that are showing there. So that's what they look like, all done with three coats of paint. And once those are dry, we're ready to stick on our stickers. And guys, it's just that taking and having fun putting our stickers on there and I just really eyeballed it to try to get it in the center as well as possible and using my little tool here you can use a credit card or whatever I just smoothed it down 
and removed all of the bubbles that might be in it and I did that with all three of our little houses and stickers guys this is the cutest thing I think I have found from the Dollar Tree in a long time and I love it I love the way that these turned out and they're very farmhouse inspired and match my bathroom very well they are very simple easy and absolutely adorable or should I say so stinking cute some items that we're going to use for this project now I got picked these up at Big Lots paid like three dollars for them they're just little candle sticks and they were on clearance and we'll be using those but you don't necessarily have to we're going to be using this Spanish moss that I picked up from the Dollar Tree also these little glitter eggs um, that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree we're going to be using this um, blue paint from Apple Barrel and also black acrylic paint from Apple, Apple Barrel and of course paintbrush. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our eggs and I'm going to be making two nests and so I want three eggs per nest and really and truly the color doesn't really matter. I kind of was trying to pick I think the lighter colors or something but anyway it really doesn't matter which ones of these you use but I just pulled out six of them and really simply the, um, the little ribbons that are on the ends of them pull out so easy I mean you just barely tug them and they come right out so I removed all of the ribbon so now we're just going to get ready to paint these eggs and the blue that I'm using from Apple Barrel is the blue bonnet blue now it did dry just a little bit darker than I thought it was going to and you can lighten it up with some white paint but it really is fine with what I'm doing with this project I, I mean I really like it so so what I'm doing is taking a little skewer and the little hole where the ribbon came out of I'm just sticking them on there kind of help keep some of the paint off my hands which I'm a crafter inevitably I'm gonna get paint on my hands somewhere <laughs> so um, we're just gonna get all of these eggs painted this super cute blue color now you'll see right here where I'm gonna grab another skewer and use it to kind of help get the, um, the little egg off of the skewer but of course you know you see I, I got paint on my hand <laughs> so we're going to get all of these painted and then I'm going to show you how we're going to make these these cute little speckly robin eggs. I'm going to before we do the speckling I'm going to use my hair dryer once again to get these dried quickly so that we can move on with our project so now we're ready to speckle these and I've taken like a paper top box you can you know do it wherever you feel comfortable doing it and I just took a little bit of water and some black paint and just basically took the the paintbrush tried to get this excess off that I could and I'm gonna take and just kind of begin to tap the paintbrush over my eggs and you'll see that some of these eggs got a little um, maybe like too big of the speckles and it ran just a little bit because it was the first of it and you can fix that very easily fix that once you get your eggs 
pretty much speckled over. The ones that you want to fix, I just take, I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna dab off, since it's still a little wet, go ahead and dab that off and then I'm just gonna repaint it. I'm gonna go ahead and take my blue and just paint right over it and then I will speckle it once again. ready to make our cute little nest for these eggs and I'm going to take my Spanish moss and there's really no like exact measurement of what you're looking for of course the more moss you use the bigger the nest the less you use the smaller the nest and so I'm just going to tear off some of this moss in kind of the size that I'm looking for and I kind of pull it to where it's long ways like this. And then I'm going to circle it around. And I hope this makes sense. And then just begin to work it with my hands. I'm going to tuck, pull, and just begin to kind of make a bowl underneath it, kind of with my fingers. And begin to just kind of work it to where it all comes together. You can kind of see where it's starting to form that little nest area down in the middle and you'll just kind of play with it, um, mold it, shape it, fix it, <laughs> and it's really that simple. Once you get it the size you're looking for, you get it to where it's all together, then we're going to get our little eggs and place them inside. How stinking cute is this nest i love it and again guys it's less than a dollar to make it because you're not using all of your products and here are the two ways that you can do these you can just have the nest by itself or you can place it on a candlestick candle stand like i have here really make it your own what we are using to create these cute pumpkins. We're going to be using a piece of a pool noodle. I'm also of course going to be using some twine from the Dollar Tree, scissors and wire cutters, a scrap piece of nautical rope, some colored wire that I got from Walmart for 98 cents as you see, some 20 gauge wire that we'll be using, and also we'll be using our hot glue gun. So let's get started. The first thing I did, of course, was just cut a piece of pool noodle and I got my uh, twine here. And make sure that on your pool noodle that you cut a slit down just one side of it because you're gonna be using that. And leaving a tail on one side, you're gonna begin to wrap it around the pool noodle. And I probably wrapped it about 25 times 25 30 times it's however you know full you want it there and once I got it wrapped then of course what I'm going to do is make sure that I leave that I have the tail on once um, have a tail on each side of the little pile here then I'm going to take a piece of my 20 gauge wire and this is what the slit is for you're going to slide it down into the hole and then bring it up each side of the twine that we've wrapped around it, making sure that your little tails are on each side of the wire. And we're just going to bring it in and twist it as tight as you can. And of course, once you get it good and twisted on there, we're going to cut off the excess, you know, leaving a tad in there because we're going to be wrapping that in a minute. And then once we get that cut off, then of course, we're going to cut off the other side of the tail from the main spool. And then you're taking your two tails, this is why you have them, and you're going to create um, tie a knot 
around that piece of wire. Now this just kind of double secures, making sure that it doesn't come unraveled. And once you cut, um, get that tied, then of course you'll cut off the excess and then slide it off of your pool noodle. And with this, um, you can kind of begin to see how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna take that little piece of wire and kind of tuck it to the inside of the wrapped wire so it's kind of out of the way. And then just kind of fluff it up. Just begin to kind of fluff it out a little bit and um, create, begin to create this pumpkin. Now we're gonna create two more of these. Now you can do four total, just however thick you want your pumpkin, but we're going to just go ahead and do the exact same thing with all the pieces that we make. Now that all of them are made, we're going to take and just again fluff them out and kind of separate those pieces of twine. And of course with twine, as you guys know, if you've worked with it any length of time, it kind of needs a haircut from time to time, <laughs> cutting off the little pieces. So we'll take care of that and then we are going to get ready to put these together. Now guys, as you see me put them together, you can kind of see this pumpkin coming to life. And we're taking where the knot and the, um, the wire is there, and that's what the point where you're going to glue them together. And with just some simple hot glue, we're gonna take and stick them together there, the first two pieces, holding them until they kind of firm up. Be careful, hot glue is just that, it's hot. And uh, this Sure Bonder is a high temperature. The one that I have is a high temperature, and believe me, I've been burned, <laughs> so be careful. And then we're just gonna take and do the same thing with the third piece and get it all together. Now we are ready to put our stem on and a little bit more embellishments. And I'm just gonna cut off a piece of this nautical rope. Kinda looks like I need a new pair of scissors, doesn't it? <laughs> so it was not wanting to cut through it there for a minute. But anyway, so I just cut off just a little bit. Now guys, you can use stems um, from outside and you know, whatever you would like to use as a stem, go ahead and cut, use that. Now with the wire, I am going to take um, a pencil and I'm going to use um, the pencil to just wrap it around and make what I would call like some little curly cues. I make two of them per pumpkin. Now this wire, I also used it when I made my summertime flowers. I'll make sure that I link that up above for you if you wanna go check out the way I used the wire in that. But these are just super simple, just to wrap it around the pencil make a couple of curly cues, and then get everything glued in to make these super cute, or should I say, so stinking cute pumpkins. Great for any fall decor. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is to take our uh, pie pan and using an alcohol swab or um, a uh, cotton ball with alcohol on it, anything like that, to be able to clean the surface of this pie pan, uh, pizza pie pan. We wanna make sure that our paint adheres to it. Now, of course, we're using chalk paint 
and it usually adheres really well, but I just wanted to definitely make sure. Now I started out using the chalk paint from the Dollar Tree and guys, just in my personal opinion, I did not like the results of it. You can see, of course, this is the first um, coat and I did wind up putting three total coats of chalk paint on here, but I just was not happy with the way that it was streaking um, on here even after it dried, so I wound up using my Waverly chalk paint to do the other two coats. Now, while I was waiting for it to dry, I wanted to paint the thankful sign out of those little uh, galvanized trio sets that you can get also from the Dollar Tree. And this too, um, I used um, three total coats of the white chalk paint. And of course, while we're waiting to dry, I, I took my, um, pick that I got here from Walmart and I just began to cut it apart. Now I love to use individual pieces and so I typically will cut my picks apart like this and then kind of create your own little swag with it and that's what I did. I put those aside for now. Now after our pizza pan dried with the three coats, I took a piece of burlap ribbon and put it across the bottom third of this pan. And using um, my hot glue gun and a little skewer here, because of course burlap is very porous, I just put some down and using the skewer, just began to press it into it. And it held really, really well. I was real surprised myself because I know that sometimes um, hot glue will kind of come off of this metal kind of stuff, but it really held well and it's doing, it definitely did great on the door. So I did that and pulled it really super tight so that it was good and secure on them, finding all those places. And then I took my thankful sign and putting some hot glue on the back of it and it bleeding through the burlap, you can see that it definitely wound up sticking to the pan, the pie pan as well. So after I did that, I took my fall foliage here and created a little swag. And guys, this of course, making it your own, as I always say, to put in together what you think looks well, you know, looks good and all of that fun stuff. And once I got it together, I took a piece of wire and secured it together really, really tight. And then took some hot glue and after I spread the leaves and all of that, the foliage around um, to where I wanted it, took my hot glue and glued it all down really well. Now this bow here, you're going to need three 20 inch pieces of ribbon, one 15 inch and one 10 inch. And taking one of the 20 inch pieces, you're going to overlap it, kind of making a circle and pulling it to find your center points. And once you have found the center, then you're just going to take it and kind of gather it together. And I kind of use a folding method where you fold up in the middle and down on each side, fluffing it out a little bit. And then I pulled the two loops together to make sure that I had the center. And I'm just gonna take a piece, another piece of my wire and secure that together with this wire by just wrapping it around there and twisting it, you know, really tight so that it doesn't come apart. Now we are going to make two more exactly like this. Now, once you get the second one made, you're going to take and put them side by side, the first one and the second one, and then cutting off the excess wire. 
You'll then, of course, make your third one. And then with this and the extra wire that you have put on it, you're gonna take this one and put it right on top to kind of fall in between the bottom two, leaving your extra wire there because we're gonna be using it as well. Now we're gonna take our 15 inch piece of ribbon and we're gonna take it and fold it in half at the um, cut ends, of course, and we're going to create our dovetails to start with. And then once you get your dovetails um, created, then you're going to, of course, find your center. And I like to take it because it's the wired ribbon, kind of make a little crease in the wire so you know exactly where the uh, center of it is. And we're just gonna kind of pinch it together and then we're going to attach it to the back of our ribbon for our little tails using that piece of extra wire that we left. And you're still gonna leave that wire because we're gonna use it one more time to create the last part of this bow. Now with our small 10 inch piece, once we get this secure, we're going to take our 10 inch piece and we're going to loop it together, kind of overlapping it about inch and a half to two inches and then just gathering it right there where we put it together. We're gonna to take it and gather it together there, leaving the loop at the top. Once you get that loop created, you're going to attach it by bringing the, the wire that we had left over around to the front and then attaching that loop to the top of your bow. And once you get this done, guys, this turns out to be the cutest bow that I have done in a long time. I really love this technique. Once we get that made, then we're gonna take and put a nice big dollop of hot glue there right at the top to place our bow in the center, holding it down until it um, fully sets and you've got your bow on your hanger. So now we need something to hang it with and I'm just using a piece of this nautical rope and it's probably around 12 inches or so long. We're gonna flip over our hanger here and we're going to just attach it to the back. Again, using our trusty hot glue gun and I'm using quite a bit of hot glue to make sure that this stays on there and doesn't come off. And again, using my little skewer here to make sure I don't burn myself. <laughs> but we want to make sure that it stays on there. And guys, I think that this door hanger turned out so stinking cute. The items that you'll need are four of these mats, these gray mats from the Dollar Tree. You'll also need a straight edge of some sort, a yardstick or a level, a pair of scissors, and we're also going to be using black or the color ink Waverly chalk paint and the color white. You'll also need two paint brushes, of course, to go with those, and you'll need some duct tape and some painter's tape. So let's get into this. So what I did is, because I want the curved edge on each corner, I cut across um, two sides. And both of these sides are going to be um, what's butted up against each other and taped on the opposite side. So what I did is after cutting the first one and laying them out, I then of course flipped one at the top that is my template down to the bottom, um, right side to right side, so that we make sure that we get the rounded corners in the four opposite corners that we're wanting. Once I got it laid down there and everything, I just began to cut it out. And this stuff cuts real easy. One neat thing about this also is the fact that it has these ribbed lines on there and it made it a lot easier to cut those longer sides for sure. 
So now we've got all four pieces done, and so now we're ready to then begin to flip them over and tape them together. So I'm going to do the first, the top two pieces in this to start with, and we're just going to flip them over. You see I kind of was messed up on one side of them over there and had to kind of fix it, but <laughs> We're just going to take um, just a few pieces and um, make sure that they are brought together really well and just then take the tape and secure it on top of those three pieces. You'll see what I'm talking about. we're just going to take the rest of these and do the same exact thing. One of the things that you'll see on this particular um, piece here, I did cut one a little bit long, but the neat thing is it was right there on that ribbed line and I was able to go in and easily fix it. And then we were going to, at that point, once we fixed it, we'll now take it and do all of the taping. Now we're ready to put it completely together and it's still the same concept. But one of the things here you'll see is again, I'm having to trim it just a little bit. Just got a little bit um, wonky, I guess you can call it. So I just needed to trim it up to make sure that I got it um, good and put together so that the seam is, you'll still see it, but it will not be as noticeable for sure. that we're all taped together. It's time to flip it over and begin our painting technique. Now what I did to create the squares that we're going to be painting is I'm using a chalk, a straight edge, and of course this um, carpenter square. And I'm just measuring out these um, squares five inch by five inch is what I started with. Now there's ways to measure this mat and get it even as to the size of square that you need. This is just what I went with. <laughs> I'm not real technical. And so you'll see that as I get to the bottom of this side, it wasn't an even five inches at the bottom for the last two squares. So I just split the difference. And I did the same on the other side of the mat as well. Now we're just going to finish marking out our um, lines across and down. Now, as you see here, of course, I've marked an X every other one on the first row and a B every other opposite one 
for the second row and then I will sew on and so forth do that and what that is is just as it said the X equals the white spaces and the B equals the black spaces this is what you'll be painting them and that just creates that pattern that makes it look like a buffalo check now that we have all of our um, blocks marked off we've got the X's for white and the B for black it's time to take our painters tape and begin painting and it's just as easy as just taking our painters tape and putting it around each individual block and of course we're starting with white and I'll show you how we also paint the black but you're just going to take a foam paintbrush and begin to using a the dabbing motion around the edges and just begin to put your paint on there We're going to go ahead and tape off one of the black spaces just so that you can see the paint going down and again we're using the same technique in the painting is we're just going to make sure that we dab around the edges of the paint to help keep it from getting you know underneath the tape it doesn't necessarily run but it can get underneath the tape and you want a nice crisp edge around each block And here is how I did the entire mat is by doing each color. I did all of the white and then went back in and did all of the black. And I did rub it in the center just a little bit to help get in the fibers. Here are some items that we're going to be using that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I picked up this bunny form that has got a plastic form with some of this little um, tinsel covering, but we're going to use this chunky yarn that I picked up back at Christmas from Walmart. We are may or may not use some of these carrots. We're going to be using some of these leftover florals that I have from the Dollar Tree. And we may or may not use some of this ribbon. I'm not real sure about that. And of course, we're going to be using our hot glue gun. So of course, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to prepare our bunny by removing the tags and then simply removing this tinsel. Now, this tinsel comes off super easy and it's going to come off all in one piece. And so if you can just easily find the end of the tinsel then just begin to unwrap it by taking it off of these little plastic little like teeth as well around it that they're um, they're wrapped around so you just kind of zigzag and go back and forth and you'll be able to easily remove the tinsel from the form Now that we have the tinsel completely taken off, we are ready to add our chunky ribbon, or excuse me, chunky yarn. I love this stuff. And easily done, we're just going to take the end of it and we're going to start at the neck. And what I do is I kind of fold it around to the back and I don't use any glue at this point because it really winds up holding really well and so I just kind of fold it over and begin to kind of wrap it around exactly the same way we took off the temple the tinsel 
using the little teeth that are on around the edge of it and it's just super simple I just begin to uh, go back and forth and I began to realize that a little bit it was losing um, I guess you could say creating some gaps and so what I wind up doing after wrapping it a little bit I then take it and I'm going to pull it through the middle and kind of wrap it around a couple of times and I'll do that and then start back with the back and forth around the little teeth and I do this about three times on this bottom part and it does two things one it helps to fill in those gaps and two it really helps to secure this chunky yarn um, onto this form it is so easy and it was really pretty satisfying going back and forth and kind of weaving it in and out. Now that I have gotten back up here to the neck, you'll see that I'm going to wrap it around one final time and then I'm going to start up one side of the head and then carry that up the ear. Once we reach the top of the ear, we're going to leave a little bit of a tail and then cut it off and then take that tail and glue it down the back of the ear and then continue on the other side. I think it'll be pretty self-explanatory as you watch the video. Now we're ready to start on the other ear. Now I kind of pull a little piece up through the middle of, in between the ears there and just kind of glue it down. And then we're going to begin to do the same weaving motion going up the other ear and then bringing the tail down back behind it, but we're not going to cut this piece off because once we glue it down the back, then we'll be able to continue it down the other side of the head. I hope that this makes sense in what we're doing here. And if you have any questions, make sure that you just ask me down in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you any way I can. It really is, once you get working in it, it's a very simple process. Now we are ready to make it all pretty. I'm going to be taking some of the florals that I had and what I like to do is just begin to kind of stick pieces and um, different florals in different places. Just kind of have an idea in my head but once I kind of start playing with them and putting them in different places and seeing where I want them then of course I will once I get it set then I'll be ready to make it more permanent and glue it down and as you see I'm also taking the little flowers off of the wire stems that they come on don't be afraid to do that I mean definitely cut things apart um, begin to pull things apart and use the pieces that you really like from them and it begins to come alive and make it your own. Now that we have our design ready, we are ready to make this more permanent. We're ready to glue it down. 
and I just begin to take the hot glue and put it down. And as you see, I'm kind of using one of these um, wire stems to help keep me from burning my fingers. So this turns out absolutely beautiful. There it is guys, our first decor piece for this spring season. Now we're going to be using some of this contact paper that I picked up at Walmart and it is a kind of a wood grained paper and it is I believe duck brand yeah duck brand um, contact paper and sorry about the glare the light was just really shining off of that plastic but I picked these up at Walmart not even sure exactly how much I paid for it but we're gonna be using some scissors a box cutter and of course a box and this um, duct tape I'm going to be using to help make this a little bit more sturdy. I'm not going to cut off the flaps. I'm just going to split it open to where I've got those all four sides together. And then we're going to take and fold in each of our little flaps here and secure it down with our duct tape. And what this will do, it'll do two things. It'll give you a nice finished edge and it will also give you a little bit more sturdy box for what we're doing here because these tree collars are you know really popular right now and they really do well when you have a good sturdy base for them so we're just gonna finish getting this all taped up and then we'll be ready to cover it with our contact paper now i've just of course folded it in half just so that I can fit it on my workspace but we're gonna open it up and one great thing about this wood grain it has the the look of those wood planks and it really helps you to line it up on the edge super easy and we're just gonna take once we get it kind of lined up there and we're gonna pull it pull back the paper backing uh, just a little bit so that you're not completely having to stick it all down at one time we're just going to pull enough back that we're able to place it and move it if we have to and not you know be unsticking a whole lot of contact paper now that we have the sticky revealed we're going to take and using the line there um, I guess you could kind of call it a plank <laughs> we're going to use that line there and uh, line it up with the corner as best as we can um, you'll see me and sorry about my arm being in the way there for a second but you'll see me kind of pull it up a little bit as I begin to tuck it underneath and it's just to make sure that I get it good and lined up so that as we continue putting it onto the box it will be a good even um, up and down kind of uh, I guess you could say lines so we want that as straight as we can get it then on each of the four finished corners we're gonna take our scissors and cut it right there at the crease down to the box and then come around to the very end and cut that one little piece off you'll see I pull off just a little square there and what that will do is be able to give us a clean edge and we'll do that on all four finished corners So now we're ready to begin to pull our backing um, back and of course smooth it out as we go. And you'll see that I just pull a little, smooth it out, pull a little more, smooth a little more out. And I take it all the way down and as you see when I get to the folded corner, I'm going to really take and push down into that little crease there so that we can make sure that we're um, able to fold it and of course we're going to do something at the finished edges when we 
um, finish up getting it on. And as you see here, we've got um, a little piece that we cut out to fit down in the backing and that will help us to get a good easy fold once we do cut at each um, I don't know what you would call that I guess a crease of the box and we'll cut at each crease and fold over so that we do get an easy fold when we begin to wrap it around it's the tree. It's a chance to start over new cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you these are the good times with you baby this year is just gonna be you and me hang by the fire and chill isn't this how it's supposed to be making our christmas memories oh. here are the supplies that i'm using for this project of course i'm using my hot glue gun I'm also going to be using just regular scissors and also pinking shear scissors. And of course you guys know that these are kind of like the little gator looking teeth <laughs> scissors. Using a pen to do the tracing with. And I'm just making a simple paper um, heart template for the size that you want for your hearts. And the fabric I'm using is just some scrap fabric that I found. I also have a piece of a sweater in there as well. Some bamboo skewers. And I'm also going to be using some leftover floral moss. And these little um, wooden hearts, um, I've had these for I think since last year. And uh, these are the kind that have that little sticky thing on the back of them. I have some floral foam and I'm going to be using this galvanized bucket. And then of course some just florals that I have some floral picks left over. So let's get into this. First thing, we're just going to take our fabric and we're going to flip it to where it's right sides meeting and take our little paper template that we cut out and we're just going to trace it out on all of the fabric. Now the um, sweater material, a little bit, you know, thicker, a little bit tougher to, to deal with, but it, you should be able to do that if you have sweater material, whatever fabric that you have on hand and we're just going to cut them all out. Once we get it cut out, we're going to then turn them over and do uh, flip them over where you can see the outside. Now that we have them all cut out, I'm taking this pillow that I have had for a little while now, this I've stuffed, um, when I've made pillows and other um, projects that I've done, it, it was $5 at Walmart and it has been the best thing I have ever bought. <laughs> Not ever, but it's, it's an awesome thing. It's very inexpensive, a lot cheaper than buying the batting in the bags. You can use the filler. You can even use an older pill if you have it. I'm just taking the hot glue gun now and just going around the edges. Now you can sew these if you're a sewer and want to do that, but I mean I do sew, but I would much rather do this a lot quicker. You'll do that all the way around, leaving an opening at the bottom so that you can stuff your batting in. And of course we're just going to use just a little bit at a time as we're putting it in there. Now be careful and don't overfill and overstuff your little hearts because you can bust the sides out if you're doing the hot glue method. But once you get it in there, then you're going to kind of um, put some more of the glue down there, but leaving a tiny, tiny hole at the bottom so that we can get the skewer in at a later time. Now with the sweater heart, because I did not want the white batting to show through that material, I'm using scraps of from where I cut the hearts out and just, ease, just going around it, easing it and putting it in there, cutting it up and all of that. 
And once I finish getting it all put together, then I'm just going to take my scissors and kind of trim it up and make it look all nice and neat. Now that those are done, we're ready to prepare our skewers. Now, I wanted them to look a little more rustic, and so I'm going to be taking this Burnt Umber acrylic paint, my favorite, <laughs> and we're gonna be doing the staining um, method on these sticks. And what that is, is basically we're gonna, I'm going to use a sponge paintbrush and I'm just going to paint on the paint and take a paper towel and wipe it off. And what that does is it gives the wood a stained effect and it also dries much, much quicker. Now that we've got those done, we're ready to put them into our hearts. And using the little hole that's in the bottom, we're going to put those in, use our hot glue gun to seal it all together, and it also helps to hold that stick into the heart. Now the sweater was just a little bit more difficult because of the pieces that were in there, so I did take a little bit of hot glue to stick up in there and then did the same thing at the bottom. Now let's prepare our bucket. Now a lot of people like to leave the plastic wrap on their floral foam, but I don't. I just find for me it makes it easier to work with. So I'm gonna take the plastic off and then taking my hot glue and just kind of smearing a good amount on the bottom to help hold it into place. Now a little crafter's tip here. When it's time to put a new stick in your glue gun, and you'll stick it in the back and it's loose and you have to push on it to make sure it grasps and all that good stuff, Take a little dab of the hot glue that's melted onto the end of your stick and then stick it down into the hole and attach it to the stick that's already down there. Voila, it'll stay put. Now back to our making our bucket here. The next step is to cover the floral foam and I'm using the um, floral moss that I had on hand. It's not really the one that I would have liked to have used, but it is what I had on hand and it turned out great. So we're just going to take our hot glue and just kind of get it around the edges really well and begin to put it in there. The goal is just to cover the floral foam. Now that that's done, we're going to take our um, florals that we have here, our picks, and cut them apart. Um, I wanted the leaves to be on here, so I just pushed the leaves up to the flowers, and then I'm going to cut them all the way at the bottom because I wanna keep the stems as long as I can in the beginning because it's a lot easier to take off than it is to put back on. And one thing that you will find with me when I'm doing any kind of floral arrangements, I'm not a professional florist, um, whether I'm doing wreaths or these little arrangements, I'm just an eyeballer, <laughs> if you want to call it that. I will put stuff in, I will take it out, I will move it around, I will you know, start to trim off the bottom to get the height that I want a little bit at a time. So as you see, I'm sticking the florals in and then you'll see me take them out. You'll see me move them around and cut the bottoms off. But ultimately it is what is pleasing to you as a crafter, as a creator. 
what you like to see, what you, you know, um, is pleasing to you. And so that's what I wind up doing, especially with this one. I did want you to see the process though, so that you could see how I um, went about doing this part. Now that I've gotten it kind of like I like it, now I've taken and started putting in the greenery, which is of course my eucalyptus, to fill it in and you know, the gaps in the front and back, around the middles and all of that. You'll also see that I did try to put some other leaves and greenery in there and I wasn't real happy with those. I wound up taking them out, but the final for me wound up being super pretty. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of these hearts to the arrangement. Um, I thought that this would be a, a nice touch to have something a little smaller, a little glitz in there. Did the same technique with the little sticks, um, just kind of giving them more of that rustic look. And I thought about using the little sticker on the back, but as you will see, these stickers are not that great. It just fell right off. <laughs> so we're going to remove that sticker from the back and use our nice trusty hot glue. We'll get those placed in there and voila, you will see a beautiful arrangement. Here's what we need for this project. Now guys, I will have a free printable for you. It's a template of the flower that we're going to be using for this project. It'll be linked down in the description box for you. We're also going to be using these aluminum cookie sheets. They come two in a pack and you get them at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna be using six packs of these. Now we're also going to be using some scissors. I'm going to be using an assortment of acrylic paints and these super pretty um, wire that I got at Walmart for 98 cent. I thought this was a great find and some great colors. We're also beginning to use our hot glue gun and also some E6000. So let's get started. We're also going to use a pencil too to trace our templates, but we're going to go ahead and open these up. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, I mean, like I said, they come two in a pack, but we're going to be using two um, of the cookie sheets per piece of the template. But the first thing I want to do is I want to cut out the center so it'll be easier for me to trace the flower petals. And I'm just using an old pair of scissors. I had gotten these from the Dollar Tree a year or so ago, and you don't want to use good scissors on these, but um, an old pair of scissors will cut this perfectly. So we'll go ahead and get the edges cut off. Now once we've got the edges cut off of both of those pieces, we're going to take and we're going to sandwich them together. We're going to glue them together. And that's where I'm going to be using the E6000 along with some hot glue. We're going to kind of have that short-term, long-term hold. The long-term, of course, being the E6000 and the short-term being the hot glue. And we're just going to smear it all in there and get a pretty decent coating in there so that it'll hold it together. The reason that I'm doing this is because this, these flowers are going to be going outside and we're going to want them to be a little bit stronger than just a single sheet of the aluminum cookie sheet. So we'll sandwich them together with the, the glues and uh, then we'll get ready to trace our template. you a little bit about this template now when you get the template it's going to come in 
really four different pieces for the big flower and then of course um, the smaller flower. And what you'll do is if you cut it out, go ahead and stick it all together as one big flower and then cut it straight up the center. That way you'll get two pretty even pieces to be able to create your templates. And so basically once I did that and I'm now just laying it on the aluminum pan and just going to trace it out and it just basically indents the uh, aluminum really well, very easy to see and to be able to cut them out. And see how that's got that in there, nice and indented and you can see it from both sides. We're gonna do the other one and then we'll also, let me show you what we do for the smaller flower. Now with the smaller flower, I am only going to use one pan and you can get two of these flowers on um, a pan. So basically it's just another one set of the two. And you'll just trace those out and we're gonna get all of these cut out. Well, now that we have our flowers cut out, we're gonna be needing a piece of foam core board, cardboard, something with um, a little bit more of a substantial weight to it. And I'm gonna be using this um, ribbon uh, spool here that's big enough to fit. You want something that kind of fits right there in the center. And I'm just gonna trace it out on my foam core board and then just cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And then I'll have my uh, the piece I need to be able to glue the flower to and have something substantial back there to hold the flower. Now you can see how the flower fits on it really well and we'll be able to glue it to there and also have a way of hanging it outside. And the way that I'm also going to be putting a little hanger in here is I'm gonna be using a little piece of the wire. And foam core board and also cardboard itself has, you know, it's kind of like sandwiched together, of course, because it's what's in the middle. And we're just going to take um, our wire and make a couple of little marks. And then I'm taking a needle and just kind of pushing it down in there to make a little channel for the wire to fit in. And then I'm just gonna take some hot glue and put a little bit on the wire there and stick it down into those two holes that I created. And then once I got those pushed down in there, then I'm gonna take a little bit of the E6000 to make it more permanent. So now comes the fun part. We get to paint our flowers. And I chose um, a teal color, and then you'll see that I also did two other flowers. Um, and I did one in blue and also one in yellow. And guys, it doesn't take a lot. You can put a couple of coats on here if you want more coverage. I just used one coat. I wanted a little bit of that um, silver to kind of show through, kind of give it somewhat of a distressed look. And then I painted all three pieces. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of black and add to the paint here because I'm gonna take and give it a little bit more dimension on each one of the petals. And guys, this is the fun part. This is where you get to create however you want to distress it or um, give it more dimension. And I just kind of lightly dabbed my paintbrush into the black and just began to kind of lightly brush it onto each petal. And then you can kind of add more. You can, if you felt like you got too much, you can go back in with the other, the colored paint that you used. Just really have fun and make these the way that you want them to look and just enjoy these flowers. I had no idea. I had so much fun creating these. And I did it while they were still wet, while the, the uh, teal color was still wet so that we could blend it in. But this is fun, guys. This makes it, and like I said, you see I put a little too much and so I went back in and just kind of worked it in the paint and I love the way they turned out. So now once the paint was dry, we're ready to seal these with some Mod Podge because again, like I said, I'm going to be putting this outside. So I just put a good heavy coat of Mod Podge on it, tried to get it around the edges as well as I could, just to kind of preserve these to be able to be out in the elements. 
Now it's time to put our flowers together. The Mod Podge is dry and we're ready to put it together. And this line here, you won't see it because we're gonna be putting that center flower in to make the center of our flower. And I basically just took half of it and using the E6000 and the hot glue again, I'm just putting those on there to give it that long-term, short-term hold. And then we're gonna take our center flower. And I took my finger and just kind of lightly gave it a brush upwards to kind of give it a curl. You can make it as curled as you want it or not as, you know, just a little bit. I just kind of slightly did mine. And then I'm gonna take and uh, do my glues on the back and get that centered in there, kind of offset on the petals. And then I did it a little bit on the larger petals as well. So now we're ready to do the center and that's where the wire comes in. What I did with the wire is I measured out, for my flower, I measured out 19 inches and then I doubled it. And the reason I doubled it is this is a thinner wire and I wanted it to be a little thicker and also I wanted to do something fun with it as well. And so basically, after measuring the 19 inches and then uh, doubling it, I began to twist it. And I'm gonna twist it pretty tightly um, all the way down, all the way to the end. And I'm gonna kinda show you here, um, after I've kinda twisted it, kinda how tightly. I did mine, again, make it your own. Do what you want to do with it. But you'll see I kinda did a tight twist on it and I think that this was perfect for what I was going for. So I finished it all the way to the end, and then I took a, um, just one of the paints that I had so that I could get a good um, beginning to this swirl, and then I began to just kind of curl it in on itself. And um, you don't want to do it too tightly. You wanna leave it open enough to where you can see that it is a little bit of a curl and um, just begin to take and I don't know, I guess you could say I left about a quarter of an inch um, around it so that it was open like it was. And then I just glued it into the center of the flower. I think it turned out amazing. We're going to jump right in and we have gotten two of these decorative bales from the Dollar Tree and we're just getting them prepared by removing all of the Christmassy look to them there. And we started out by using this acrylic paint in gray and uh, yeah, this didn't work out so well. And I should have known better. Um, I tried it out and you'll see as I'm putting it on here that it just didn't cover very well it was like watery on it so i took some of this rust-oleum american accent it's a flat gray primer that i had on hand and gave these a good coat um, good base coat on the inside and on the outside now we'll use the acrylic paint a little later on but to start with we're going to go ahead and pull out our folk um, art paint metallic paint here in the color silver and also a pack of these um, makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use a couple of those. And we're just going to begin by taking our makeup sponge and dabbing it all over the bale. And I just do this in a dabbing motion to be able to make it kind of give it that um, hammered look that galvanized metal has and we get it all over there and then we're going to also take some of that gray acrylic paint and we're going to begin to do the same thing now of course you'll see when i first start out you can see kind of the square of the sponge but i'm just going to take and blend this in all over and uh, do it just like i did the silver but a little bit wider i guess you can kind of say and in between each one of these layers, I'm gonna take my hair dryer and I'm going to go ahead and dry each layer so that we can get 
that layered look. And I go back in with the silver and then a little bit more of the gray again. And then I'm gonna also do this on the inside. Now, this is not real important. I just didn't want it to be noticeable when you're looking at it hanging. So once I got the grays done, then I'm gonna go in with some folk art metallic gold and just basically do a, bra a dry brush effect along the edges and just kind of giving it that kind of a rusted look. And I use the gold and I also use some burnt umber. Now once our bales are completely dry, it's time to make some hangers for our bales. Now, for the first bale, I measured out, I, it was probably about 12 to 13 inches, and then I just doubled it over like four times to create um, the shorter hanger for the first bale. Now I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and wrap it around the top of the twine, and this will help me to thread it through the top of the bale. And of course, the hole in the top of the bale, you just take your scissors and kind of make sure that it's wide enough for you to feed that through. And once you get that on there, then you're ready to feed it through. And you, you'll see kind of here how it's like, eh, it wasn't going through. So I just took my scissors and just kind of helped it out just a little bit and got it in there. And what we're gonna do is thread it through and kind of fold it in half. And that will be the first one. And you'll see that that makes it about six or so inches long. Now for the second one, we did the same thing, but of course we're gonna make them a little bit longer. And I did this one about 24 inches long and then doubled it over um, about four times as well, creating the same thing that I did with the first one. And of course this one being a little bit longer. And we'll do that and then you'll see how they kind of hang, kind of offset from each other. Now it's time to pretty things up even more. So I got some of this greenery and different stuff from picks that I have picked up at, um, of course, at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna take this one here and I'm going to pull off the little stems off of the wire piece and put a little hot glue on there to make sure that these do not come off. They don't fall off because they're notorious for doing that. So we'll get those stuck back on. I'm gonna do all three of them and then we're ready to attach it to the front side of our bale. And I'm just using some hot glue for this. I've kind of taken the wire and hooked it a little bit so it kind of hooks down into that little hole you see in the top and just adding some of my hot glue to it so that it gets on there and stays. And we're just adding other greenery and then I'm gonna take some of these little berries and cut them apart and glue them kind of down that one particular vine there so that it gives it that fun Christmas feel to it. And then we're gonna be ready to finish touches on here and do a bow on the front. Now I'm using just a little bit of um, about half inch wide ribbon that's not wired and then a piece of burlap ribbon that is wired. But we'll first start with the regular ribbon and the way that I'm gonna make this bow so that it holds, I guess you could say kinda is a straight bow, is I take two loops with the ribbon and then just kinda tie them on themselves. And it doesn't have to be perfect at first because you're just trying to get it together. Then you can start to pull it from either side to get it to the desired size that you are looking for. So just kind of pulling it tight and then pulling your little tails. Once you get the size that you want, well, let's go ahead and make our little looped bow here with the burlap ribbon. We'll fold it over on itself, finding our center, flipping it over, and then we're gonna push down in the middle and then kind of over and down on either side. I'll show you again. It's down in the middle and then folding back on either side and that gives you the kind of that really pretty center. And then you wanna make sure that your little um, bows or your little loops are even. So you just kind of pull them up to themselves. 
And then I'm gonna do this one-handed here, and I'm gonna take that extra ribbon that I had, and I'm just gonna tie it as tight as I can, putting a little knot in there to secure that center. And that was a little difficult, but we did it there. And then I'm gonna just trim off the each side of it there once I get it where I want it. And then we are ready to add the other ribbon to the top of it here. So we're just going to take a little hot glue and we're going to just place the other ribbon right in the center on the top of it. And then I'm going to just cut me some dovetails into the little tails here to make it all pretty. And then of course we're going to put our bow right here on the front of our bale. Now to bring it all together, we're going to gather up our twine here all at the top, getting them the level that you want between the two of them, and creating another bow with my ribbon, just like I did the first time, gluing it at the top where I had tied the twine together, and then just trimming off of my little tails here. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our first project. You're gonna need an eight by 10 canvas, and I'll pick this up at the Dollar Tree, stuff that I've had on hand. Also, this chicken wire that I got from my daughter. You're also going to need some um, of this Apple Barrel Burnt Umber Acrylic Paint, and we're going to need a staple gun, and of course, these small little um, Close pins for this little note sign. Let's get started. Now, of course, the first thing we're going to do is prepare our canvas, and I'm basically going to be pulling the staples out of the back of this canvas and saving that canvas for a, another project later on. But I wanted to definitely take out the staples because of what I'm doing with this. I'm going to be putting the uh, chicken wire on the back of it and I didn't want that extra bulk of having those staples in there as well. So basically I'm just taking a flathead screwdriver, lifting them up and then pulling them out with a pair of needle nose pliers. And we'll just take and like I said, set this canvas aside and use it for another day. Now we're gonna use this brown acrylic paint in the color Burnt Umber and I've done this several times before on other projects and I really like doing this is taking the paint and doing a stain effect with it and basically we're going to paint three sides of this basically the inside the outside and the top we're not going to have to worry about the back and once you paint it on just take a damp rag or paper towel and begin to kind of wipe off the excess and what that'll do is two things. One, it'll look like stain, it'll, the wood grains will come through, and two, it will dry much quicker than using stain. Now don't get me wrong, I love my stain and I do use this, but here lately I've been doing this a little bit more. So you're gonna do that all the way around until you have it completely covered and it's gonna absolutely turn out beautiful. Once we have that done, we're going to turn it over onto the back side and we're going to place our chicken wire. Now I had gotten this from my daughter when we helped her clean out her storage building and um, just uh, basically just measured it out and cut it and to, you know, put it on the back here, just on the edge, just big enough to where it would fit right there on the edge and then begin to staple that to the back. Now I do that all the way around 
And then you'll see that I kind of go in and kind of reinforce the corners where the, the, the sides come together on this frame to make it a little more strong. Once we have that, then of course we're just going to put some of these cute little small um, clothespins onto the chicken wire. This can hold little notes, it can hold business cards, whatever you need to put up there in your command center. And I'm going to be putting this on the side of my refrigerator because it's exposed and so I just got some of this uh, what they call magnet tape and I took a, a strip wide enough for the, the um, frame and then I cut it in half and I'm going to be using hot glue to help me secure this down. It is sticky on the back but because of the chicken wire being a bit bulky I'm using some hot glue to kind of help stick that to the back of this frame. So now for project number two, we are going to be using some of these painter st uh, sticks. These are the larger painter sticks that you can get from Home Depot. There's three in a pack. You'll need two packs and I think they're like 97, 98 cents a piece. You'll need two of these chalk boards that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Again, we're going to be using the uh, stain effect with the paint and of course our hot glue gun. Now this, um, of course, you're going to be using these chalk boards at this, that are this size. And then you're going to need two of the painter stick cut at 17 and a quarter inches and you're going to need three pieces cut at eight and three quarter pieces. And after we have stained them and they've dried, then we're going to be setting it out, just kind of using it um, as a template to start with so that we can get our spacing just right. And you start by putting in that center piece and measuring it out and making sure that it's good and centered and then just gluing this down. Now, of course, I'm using hot glue here but just for time's sake so that it would um, stick together quicker. But definitely if you want this to be more permanent, you want to use something like an E6000. Um, we, then we're going to flip this over and we're going to be placing our chalkboard in there trying to get the spacing from the top and bottom. Once I get it where I want it, you'll see that I kind of go in with a pen there and make some little marks. I do that on both top and the bottom so that when I flip it back over, to glue it down, I'll know exactly where I need to put it. Again, just a couple little dabs of hot glue, getting it set, doing that again on the other side, and then we'll be ready to flip it back over and place our chalkboards in place. Now I'm making a little menu board with this for the side of my um, refrigerator, but this can also be a little note center, it can be whatever you need it to be for your area, then of course this can, is easily um, converted, I guess, to whatever you want it to be. So now I'm just taking a little bead of glue on the top and bottom, placing my chalkboard in there, and um, then it's ready to put our stuff down. Just like um, I said, I'm doing a menu uh, for the week just to kind of help keep us a little bit organized, of course. Once you get it ready to, um, you're finished with whatever you're putting on the front, then we're just going to take some more of that magnet tape and cut two strips and put one on each side and you're ready to place it on your refrigerator. This last project is a real simple project. It was a key hanger, key holder, whatever you want to call it, that I've had for a while now. And I wanted to add this to my little command center. And all I'm doing is taking a piece of this um, magnet tape, measuring the length of the back of it with it. And then basically I'm just gonna peel that off and put it, stick it onto the back and it'll be a part of my command center to help keep us a little bit more organized, knowing where our keys are and that sort.
for our flag wreath, of course, you're going to need a flag. And I picked up this 3x5 poly cotton flag from Walmart. Now, this was a kit that came with the pole and the brackets and everything, but it was a whole lot cheaper than just buying a flag outright. It was kind of crazy. But this is the one that I wound up going with. I think it was $9.99 for this set. So I also picked up some of these um, cute little florals. They're called white foxtails. I picked up two of those and they were just 97 cents a piece. I also had this metal star on hand and so we're going to be using that as well. You'll also need an 18 inch grapevine wreath. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. They're like $4.50, $5, something like that. And hot glue. Let's get started. Now I'm going to take my flag out of the pack here and we're going to fold it right here on the edge of the blue square where the stars are and we'll get that to kind of fold it over and evened up here and then I'm just going to take my hot glue and I'm just going to kind of stick it right here to kind of hold it together because of what we're going to be doing on the next step. And I'm just going to kind of seal that over and be super careful, of course, because hot glue is hot. <laughs> so just be careful in getting that together. Once you have that together, then we're going to kind of take the flag across kind of at a diagonal um, angle, I guess. You'll kind of see as I pull it together. But we're going to wrap it over one side, kind of tucking it under, and you want it long enough to where as it wraps around the, the wreath, it will come back to itself underneath. And you'll see why here in just a minute. But we're going to gather it together right here at the bottom part of the, um, the blue square. And you'll see I'm going to be using um, a large zip tie. You can get these at the Dollar Tree, you can get them Walmart, hardware stores, just anywhere. You just want kind of a, a big one here. So we're going to take it and thread it down through one side and then bringing it back up um, the other side of the flag. And with grapevine wreath, you can stick it up anywhere there because it's going to grab a hold and it's going to hold very securely. So once you get it threaded up through there, we're just going to pull it together here, making sure everything looks right like we want it, and then just fastening it together. Now before you pull it completely, I took a minute and just made sure that everything was tucked the right way, pulled out, pleated here, <laughs> just all of the things to make it, you know, make sure that it's hanging right once we get it all secure to the wreath. Now we're ready to just pull it tautly here, making sure it's good and tight. And then we're going to just take a pair of wire cutters and we're going to just snip off that excess zip tie. Now we're ready to just turn it over here. And this is where I was talking about making sure that it comes back over um, to itself so that when we get ready to glue this down, we can pull it tight enough to make it look super um, clean edge there on the other side. So I just begin to put some hot glue on it and um, tuck it down there and just make sure that it's nice and secure. flowers here and I basically am taking my wire cutters and I'm cutting them apart. I love to do this because um, I can then put them where I want to put them and before I ever glue anything down I am going to just kind of put things where I feel like that I want them to go and I can move them around. This gives me the opportunity to move them around and make sure I get the right placement for me. And of course you definitely do what you want to do with it for sure. So now that I see that I've got it, I've got the star put on here and I see where I want them. Now I'm ready to secure them down with some hot glue 
and I just begin to kind of pull them out, put a little hot glue there on the ends, and then place them back and uh, begin to finish this out super cute. We've got them securely in there. Kind of see that I've got the star and everything looks good. Now we're ready to secure our star to the wreath. And again, I'm using another um, zip tie and I'm going to do the same thing by taking it down and back up in the area that I want it to be close to the flag here. And then I'm taking a smaller zip tie and I'm putting it on the little hook thing in the back so that when I do secure this down, it will um, hang correctly. So I lay it down on there and then I'm gonna take the bigger zip tie and I'm going to thread it through the smaller zip tie. Once I get that in there, I'm going to then, of course, secure the bigger zip tie, latching it together and pulling it really tight. And then I'll do the same thing with the smaller zip tie. So here's what you're gonna need for the first ornament. We're going to be using these white Christmas ball ornaments. They are plastic. And I got these off of Amazon for a really good price. I also got this ribbon off of Amazon as well. It is the uh, red and black buffalo check. And I will make sure that I link both of these down in the description box for you. I also used my silhouette to create these words, these Christmas words, joy, Mary, peace, and Noel. And I'm using Oracle 651 black vinyl. Came from the uh, website defont.com and it is the font The Skinny. And I also am using this little tea light candle holder to be able to hold the ornament for me. You'll need your scissors and that's it. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to take like an alcohol swab or um, alcohol on a cotton ball or what a napkin, just something with alcohol to kind of clean off any oils or anything on the um, ornament so that the vinyl sticks to it really well because it is plastic. Now if you use the glass, it will stick very well on the glass. You'll have to make sure that you get it right where you want it to start with because it will stick immediately. But now with the plastic, you do have to kind of work with it just a little bit. So I got it centered and I'm gonna use my thumb on one hand to hold down the center. And then I'm gonna start at one end of the word. And I'm just going to begin to use my fingernail and my finger to um, press it on there so that it'll stick. And then just lift up each word and move to the next, or should I say letter, and then move to the next letter until you have it all put on there. And then that's what it will look like once you get it on there. Well, then I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm going to cut, I think it wound up being about a seven, seven and a half inch piece of ribbon. You can make it as big or as um, small as you want it. And then um, I, once I cut that, I folded it in half to meet each end and then folded it in half long ways to create my dovetail on the ends. Once I got those, I then folded it so that I had a little point to be able to thread it through the top of my ornament and got it on there. And of course it fits in there pretty snugly, but I still decided to go ahead and tie it at the top there so that it was good and secure. And guys, once you get it tied on there, that's all there is to it. You just need to get yourself a little hook to be able to add these to your Christmas tree. This is so cute and so simple. And 
and here's what we need for this project. You'll need some clothes pins. You can pick these up at Walmart, at the Dollar Tree, just pretty much anywhere. And you're going to need eight clothes pins for each snowflake that you make. I also went through my Christmas craft stash and just pulled out some different things that I had, uh, different embellishments. It's going to be whatever you want to use. I'm going to be using white Waverly chalk paint and I'm also going to be using Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber because we're going to do the stained effect on one of them. You'll need scissors and of course a couple of paint brushes. You may use raffia, that's just kind of one of those embellishments that you'll need and you'll also gonna need some hot glue, a hot glue gun. So let's get started. So basically what we're gonna do with our clothes pins is we're gonna take them apart. We're gonna take off that spring that's in the middle and they're pretty easy to do just to pull them apart and pull out the spring out of each um, one of those eight clothes pins. Once you have all of those out, then we're going to take and we're going to turn them around to where you've got the two flat sides and we're going to glue those together. And we'll just put a bead of glue down the back of it all the way down and sandwich it together. And make sure that you line them up really, you know, as straight as you can get them and everything. And if you have some oozing hot glue, just be careful. Um, especially if you're using a high temperature hot glue gun that you don't burn yourself because it will ooze out just a little bit. But once you get those together and you've got them good, you take and do all of them and um, it'll be ready for the next step. Now we are ready to paint. And I only wound up putting one coat of the white Waverly chalk paint on um, this particular snowflake. Um, it didn't need any more than that. It covered really well. That's why I love working with this Waverly chalk paint so much. So we'll just paint each one of these and um, get those to dry and be ready, of course, again for the next step. Now, as you see, I, I let them dry, and of course, my camera decided to die about the time I was getting ready to work on these brown ones. These are the stained ones, and I used the brown um, apple barrel paint to be able to do that stained effect that I've done before. So now we're ready to put the snowflakes together. And basically each one of your snowflakes you'll see kind of has a pyramid type at the very top of it. And we're gonna take and put two of those together with some hot glue. And we're gonna do uh, another two together also with some hot glue. And then once we get four pieces together like that, we're going to flip one set of them and put it on the top. I guess you could kind of say, I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here, but you want to also make sure that as your glue is um, cooling and drying there, you want to keep it flat on your crafting table so that it is good, straight, and flat. So then once we have got it flipped around there, we're gonna put some glue on the tip and put the two of them together. And as you can see, we're starting to have the shape of our snowflake. I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of extra hot glue right there in the center to make sure that we are good and secure. We don't want this falling apart and popping off when we put it on our Christmas tree. <laughs> so we'll make sure that it's good and secure with a little extra glue. So then it's just time to begin to put the last four pieces in between each set there. And you can kind of see how I'm lining them up. And once you kind of get them in the area that you want, take a little bit of glue and just get them all glued together.
Now comes the fun part of embellishing and you can just play with it and do different things but I really loved the way this glittered ornament just kind of pops right off of that white and then I also put a little red bale there right in the center um, and just basically gluing this down really well making sure that it's good and secure and it'll also help to make sure everything stays together holds together and we'll place that down there in the center and then place the little red bell that I had. You could have also put a silver bell in there. You could put a bead, um, a little sprig of holly. It's whatever you want to do. Just play with them and make them your own. But I think that this one turned out so pretty. Um, and you can even do other things with the white snowflake first before you embellish it or don't embellish it at all just use have your white snowflake but I think they turned out beautiful but then we also did our brown um, stained one and I just began to kind of play around to see what I wanted to do with this one because this one really kind of even though we don't have brown snowflakes I felt like that this was really kind of a rustic ornament that would really look really pretty on kind of a woodland theme like I do on my Christmas tree or a rustic Christmas tree farmhouse. I just think that it just would really make a statement. And of course these little wood snowflakes that I had from last year um, really looked super nice. I painted one and I also stained one. And then there were these plastic um, snowflakes that came from the Dollar Tree as well but I ultimately wound up putting the white one with a little brown bell right in the center and this turned out so pretty I love these um, and I really don't know which one is my favorite let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite So here is what we'll be using to make this project. Now all of these are from the Dollar Tree. I got two of these door hangers or wall hangers. I got some flags, a couple of buckets, some foam stars. I'm also going to be using these skewers, some floral foam, Spanish moss, and of course our hot glue gun. So the first thing that I wind up doing is taking that burlap strip off of the back of each one of these. Now I had a little bit um, kind of that wanted to be a little bit of a booger but you know just give yourself some time and you can definitely get these pieces off pretty easy. And basically we're just going to get them ready to put these skewers on the back because we are going to be making some centerpieces. And I just take these skewers and my hot glue gun and glue these sticks to the back. And I basically just put a bead down onto the star or the USA. And then I take and kind of reinforce it a little bit with just a little bit over it in a couple of places. So now that we have all the skewers um, glued to the back, I'm going to use my acrylic paint in the color Burnt Umber to paint these sticks and it's just a little one coat because I want more of um, a rustic look to them. I don't want to leave them this light color so I paint all of the sticks for each one of these pieces. Once I've gotten those um, painted, I wanted to go into each one of the stars and of course each of the letters and just kind of take my um, paintbrush with a little bit of the paint, kind of doing a dry brush effect even over the glitter. And what it did for me is it kind of muted it 
the glitter down just a little bit, kind of made it look a little bit more uh, warm, a little bit more rustic. And I did it on each one of them. And in some places I may have gotten a little bit much. And even with the glitter, you can take a little damp paper towel and kind of rub it in and still get that same look. It's not real evident, but for me, it was enough. And you can do it as much or as little as you want. So now that I've gotten each one of those done, I'm ready to now begin to build my centerpieces. And for each one of the buckets, the neat thing about this particular floral foam, I just love this type of floral foam. And um, it comes in the pack and it's four separate pieces. And so I put one in each bucket and then I take another one, cut it in half, and then cut that half in half to make sure that I've got enough of this foam in the bucket to do what we're wanting to do here. So now it's time to have fun and start putting these pieces together. And really guys, this is your, you know, creation. Make it how you want it, you know, of course USA, but you can make it heights that you want, you can put it in what kind of order, just however you want to feel this bucket in. Just have fun with it and make it your own. Now once I had the, um, the stars and the USA in, I did go and put one flag in the back, kind of in, on either side of it, because it is both of these pieces I am going to be putting on my dining room table. And so I wanted them kind of, you know, symmetrical in a way. Now I'm taking these uh, little foam stars, these, they're also glitter, but I did the same effect with them that I did with the other pieces, and that's just dry brushing a little bit of this brown paint on it, just to kind of mute it down, give it a little bit of a rustic look. Then I took and stuck it on a skewer as well, painted that skewer, and then began to use those in these um, center pieces just to give it that fun uh, look. Now, as you see, I am cutting down the sticks to um, put them in there. And again, it's the same thing that I said before. Have fun with it, make it your own, arrange it any way you would like to. Now once I uh, got it set like I wanted, now I'm ready to put in some of this Spanish moss. And you'll see I took those foam stars out just to um, give myself room to work and kind of that also helps to kind of hold the Spanish moss in there. I didn't glue it, I just put them in there and created these cute, fun centerpieces that can be used on any table together or even separate. They can be put on a mantle wherever you would like to use these and I just think they turned out so good. Here's what we're going to be needing for this project. Of course our reclaimed pallet wood that we're using. You're also going to need your safety glasses. Don't forget those. <laughs> we also need a pencil. I'm using some hardware left over from my kitchen reno and a tape measure and a carpenter square. The tools I'm going to be using is my sander, my nail gun, and my um, drill, as well as my miter saw. So let's get started. Now, of course, the first thing I'm doing here, you'll see, is just kind of laying out my pallet wood. Now, guys, of course, all of the measurements, it's not, um, it's going to be based on your stove top, the size, the width, and the, the um, how wide and how tall you need to make it. And the first thing I'm going to do is just square off one end of the wood. Now, of course, don't forget your safety glasses. You definitely need those. But I'm just going to take the ends off of each piece of wood here to square it up to make it easier to get a correct measurement for the width of the, um, the stove cover. 
Now once we've got that done, and I'm going to lay those out there, I'm going to take and I'm going to measure the width on and mark it on each one of my pieces of wood. And I'll get that um, just marked on each one and then go back and create a little line with my carpenter square. Now we're ready to cut them to the size we need. You want to make sure that you the, the part that you are actually using is going to be on the left side of your blade and the part you're getting rid of is going to be on the right side because you have the width of the blade itself. So you just want to make sure that you've got it and now of course mine has a little red um, light on it that puts the line where it needs to go. So now I'm going to show you a little tip here to make sure that your pieces are going to be exactly the same and you don't mess up um, hitting the line on a little bit on one side or the other. You're going to lay the first piece of cut wood on top of the second piece that you're ready to cut. And you're going to push it up against your back brace and you'll see how you can take and once you make sure it's even on one end, bring your saw down and scoot the piece of wood, shoot really the two pieces of wood until your one that's already cut is touching the blade. And it will be right there in the same spot and you're ready to cut. Once you get it cut, then you'll see that these pieces are exactly the same size. Now let's move to the next step. Now that all of these pieces are cut, we're ready to sand. And I'm just going to be using an um, 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to be sanding all sides of each board. You want the, the front, the back, both the sides, the top, the bottom. You want to make sure that you get them because you know pallet wood does have a tendency to be super rough. And so this will take um, a bit more sanding. And I don't know if you can really tell it here or not, but there is a huge difference in the, the way that they look and even the color of them. It takes that, you can kind of see right here. So now we're ready to get the rest of these sanded and move to the next step. Guys, don't forget to check me out over on Instagram. I'm at Fixin2AL. You can kind of catch some behind the scenes stuff and also get to kind of know me on a little bit more of a personal level. So don't forget, check me out over there. Let's get back to the project. Well, our wood is nice and smooth and now it's time to stain it. We're going to be staining it with this Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze in the color Java Brown. And I love this stain because you can put it on as dark or as light as you want to. It just works out awesome. And I'm basically just going to take my foam paintbrush that I have here and um, just begin to do each and every nook and cranny of all of these pieces and I don't wipe any of it off because I really want this dark rich color but you can wipe it on you know put it on and then turn it and wipe it off and you can see kind of how it definitely brings out the wood grain of this pallet wood so I'm gonna get the rest of these done and we'll be back for the next step so now that we have all of our wood stained and it's good and dry, we're ready to put this together. Now, because my nails are a little longer, because I'm using what I have at home, I'm putting some wood underneath each one of these um, sides, but I'm gonna be using some wood glue and of course my nail gun to get all of this put together. And I've cut these smaller strips, you know, the, um, the length of um, my, cover here on one on each side and this is how we're going to put it all together and I'm just going to take the wood glue and I'm going to place it on there and then of course I'm measuring um, two inches from the side and um, then I'm just going to take my nail gun and of course my safety glasses and we're going to put two nails in each one of these pieces of wood and this will definitely secure it all together. 
Now you're going to see when I flip it over those pieces of wood that I had in there because like I said my nails were a bit longer. So we're going to take these pieces of wood off and then I'm just going to take my hammer and basically knock the pieces of nail that came through the bottom and just kind of bend them over and kind of hammer them back into the wood there so they're not uh, sticking out or causing any issues whatsoever. Now I have taken and cut out some stencils with my silhouette and if you guys are interested in wanting to see a more step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create these stencils, let me know down in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you. Now what I'm doing right here is I've put my stencils down and I'm taking Mod Podge and I'm putting it a layer of it on to help to seal it and um, you know seal from getting paint bleed as best as possible. Now it won't completely keep it from bleeding but it will definitely help tremendously. And now that we've gotten all of that done and we've put the paint on there we're ready to reveal what this looks like. Now up here at the top you'll see I kind of got a little bit of paint over the edge of the stencil. I'll show you how I fix that here in just a second. But first, I want to reveal what this looks like. This turned out so good. And I'm using kind of what they call a cream colored paint. It's a, it's a chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. And you can see uh, there may be just a touch of bleeding, but not terribly bad at all. Now up here at the top, I'm just going to take my sandpaper and I'm going to um, basically just sand off the majority of this and it'll also take off some of the stain, but that's okay. Because once we get it sanded to where we want it, we're going to take a damp towel, get all of the dust off of it, paper towel there, and then I'm going to take my um, gel stain and take just a little touch of it and touch this up. Now, of course, it looks really dark when you see me first putting it on here, but once it dries, it will look perfect, and then we're ready to put the clear coat on. So now you see we've got all of the stenciling done, and of course I did a T for their last name. Now I'm ready to put the clear coat on here. I'm using this polycrylic, and just beginning to take a foam brush and put it on there. When I started to put it on there, I noticed that it was lifting up a little bit of that chalk paint, and I realized that um, I needed to do something a little bit different, so kind of wiped off that that was there, and then I just went in with a dabbing motion over the first coat over um, all of the chalk paint, and then just kind of lightly um, brushing out those bubbles. Once I got that first coat on there, then the second coat went on perfectly. Now we're ready to put these handles on and basically I'm taking a piece of chalk and once I've got my handles lined up where I want them, I'm just going to take a piece of chalk and put it um, around the little holes where the screws will go and then taking that I'm going to put it on in the spot that I'm going to put them and it's going to place a little bit of chalk where I need to drill my holes. Such a neat trick, huh? Now once I've got my holes marked, I'm again going to take some of the wood, um, the scrap wood, and put it underneath it because I'm going to be drilling through, all the way through, and I definitely don't want to mess up my countertop here. So I'm going to put a couple of pieces of wood there to um, make sure that I've got um, enough room to drill down all the way through. And even if I have to go into that scrap wood, it's going to be fine. So we'll get that set, and then we're going to take our drill, and we're going to drill the holes for the screws. Now when you're using a drill bit, make sure that when you're drilling in and then you're coming back out, keep that blade moving. That way it'll come out so much easier. 
Once you've got your holes done, then you're just going to attach your handle, screwing them in from the back. So here's the cuts that you're going to need for this project. You'll need six 1x4s at 30 and a half inches long. You'll need two 1x2s at 28 inches long. And then you'll need four 1x2s at 10 and a half inches long. Now of course the cuts will be in regards to your window frame or where you're putting this. So of course we're going to be using our Waverly chalk paint to paint all of these pieces. I'm using a foam brush. I'm going to put on some of these gloves and of course some sandpaper. Now you can use an orbital sander, hand sandpaper, it doesn't really matter, um, but you just want to make sure that all of your edges where you made your cuts are nice and smooth and um, the wood I had already um, sanded and everything. not a whole lot just to because it's kind of rugged and you know these are shutters so we are doing a little bit of a rustic look somewhat on them because of the old window frame so basically you just take and paint I'm painting just the top and all four sides I'm not painting the back because you're not going to see it once you put it all together So now it's time to put this together and of course we're taking our uh, three one by fours and we're just going to get them even and put together side by side and then we're going to be taking our two pieces of um, one by twos the ten and a half inch pieces and I'm going to kind of start at the top and we'll call this up here at the top and I'm going to measure three inches down from the top and that's where I'm going to go ahead and secure the top piece and you'll see why here in just a minute that we want this top piece secured first so we just measure that three inches and then I'm going to take my um, my little brad nailer here and we're just going to tack them in and I start on the outside pieces of the 1x4s and go ahead and put two brad nails in there and then once I get the outside two then I'm going to move and do the inside one and that way it um, stays together, it's good and secure and we just want to make sure that it's even. So now we're ready to put our cross piece in there. Now this is of course our 28 inch one by two. And what you'll see here is that I've got the top piece secured. So now we're gonna take and we're gonna get it even right at the top, kind of overlapping just a little bit there and kind of having the bottom piece semi done at three inches so you can kind of know where to make your cuts. And then I take a pencil and I'm just going to put two little marks right where it meets the wood. And this is where we're going to be making our mitered cut. And of course, you'll see my two marks that I made here. And we're just going to take and draw a straight edge, connecting the two marks. And that will be, of course, again, where that we're going to make our miter cut. And I'm just taking my square here which is a straight edge and I'm going to just make that line and then I'm going to take it over to the miter saw and cut that off. Now we have our first mitered cut and you'll see how it fits right there and it looks great right there on the edge. So now we're ready to move over to the other end. And this is why I did not want to secure the bottom piece as well, because that way we're gonna do the same thing by making our marks and making our miter cut. And if we 
shorten or lengthen that cut just a little bit. That way we'll be able to move that bottom piece and make it a secure, snug fit right there up against it. And then you're just going to measure both ends to make sure that it's level. And once you do that and you get it where you need it to be, just gonna take and tack it down with the brad nailer and um, you'll be ready to move on to the next step. on our cross piece here I'm only putting one nail in each one of those Now you can also use wood glue on this um, I wound up doing that on the second one didn't think about it on the first one but it, it's just going to be hanging on the wall that's not going to be bumped or anything like that so it should be good now as you see I kind of went over on the back and put a little extra nail in the back of it just to kind of help secure this one down so now I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to touch up where all the nails are just to kind of give it, cover up the silver of the nail so that they're not real obvious. I mean, you'll see the nail holes, but that's kind of gives that rustic charm to it. And I'll go ahead and do all of that and then we're ready to move on and distress it. Now I'm just taking a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand the edges um, and give it, you know, just again that rustic feel, that kind of an old feel. I mean I know that the, the paint is, you know, pretty stark white and you can use any color of course that you want that goes with your decor, but I'm just going to take and get the edges really good and then we're going to go back in with some of my brown burnt umber acrylic paint and just begin to give it a little bit more of a kind of a, a distressed look. Cleaning it off with a little bit of you know paper towel, dusting it off and then again like I said just taking a really little bit of the uh, paint and we're going to do a bridra a dry brush effect on this and um, just kind of going along the edges and just kind of filling it in you know in different places just kind of have fun with it Once we got these all done, now we're ready to install them at my daughter's house. And of course, my, I recruited my husband, my sweet husband, to help me. He drilled the holes for the little anchors for the window that we put up. And then, of course, I went in and um, put the screws in. We kind of tag-teamed this. And I think that they turned out absolutely beautiful. My daughter loves this. Guys, see how this just just made it and it's um definitely fills in this big wall and it is absolutely beautiful all right we're going to go ahead and just jump in and get these pieces spray painted and i'm using the rust-oleum american accents in the color heirloom white satin and also guys if you have not gotten one of these to spray paint you must get one these are awesome finger savers they're great you can spray paint for a long time using these i will link down in the description box below um, where i got this it is um, awesome i love it and it is just like you're just holding a little um, little gun like thing it's great also these um, planters came with these um, pieces that fit on the bottom um, and I guess one of mine fell off and at the store or whatever and I only had one so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down using some E6000 
on this one and then just not worry about it on the other one and we're going to do a little bit of embellishing um, towards the end. So I'm just going to take my spray paint and begin to spray paint it. Now I tried my best not to spray on the very very top of these there because I want the glue to adhere really well. Now I know I got over spray but um, it definitely worked out okay. And I'm also, as you see, spraying the um, pizza pan. So I did a, two coats of this just to make sure that everything was good and covered. So I let these dry overnight. And so now that they're good and dry, we're ready to put this together. Now, like I said before, this one was missing that piece on the bottom. So I'm gonna let that one be my bottom one. And um, this is the one with the little cap thing, I'm going to let that one be the top. So I'm going to be using, of course, hot glue and also E6000 to put these together. And that will, um, of course, the hot glue dries fast and the E6000 will have time to dry. Now this new nautical rope from the Dollar Tree is awesome. It is um, soft and lighter color. I love it and it went well with this. So now we're ready to put the um, pizza pan onto the top of the uh, planter. And I just took that little lip that's right there um, on the bottom of the pizza pan and I just put a nice little bead of the E6000 glue on there. And guys, this fit like, it, like a glove. It's like it was supposed to fit right there on it and um, to make the top of the little side table. So now we are ready to put this together. And on each one of these little tabs, I'm going to put um, a good amount of the E6000 and then I'm gonna go in with the hot glue and put a good amount of hot glue right next to it there so that everything will stay together and hold together for a long time. Now we are ready to embellish and we're going to be using the nautical rope and I've taken some clear tape and put it on the end to keep it from unraveling because this stuff will unravel very easily and I'm just going to get uh, the starting point and just take it and measure around the area that I want to put this rope. Once I get it measured there, I'm gonna take a piece of the um, tape here, the, the scotch tape, clear tape, and I'm going to put it right on the area where I had marked it with my finger. And once I get that on here and get it wrapped around, um, completely wrapped around, I'm then going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it right in the middle of that tape. And what that will do is that will keep it from fraying on both sides. Now we are ready to put this onto our little table. And I'm just going to start right here by putting some a bead of hot glue, gluing it and doing that all the way around. Once I got here to the end, I realized that um, as I was putting it on with the hot glue, I kind of stretched the, the um, rope out a little bit and it became a little bit long. So I'm just going to measure again, again putting the tape on there, um, wrapping it around and then cutting it off right there in the middle of that tape and then finish gluing that down. Once you get that finished gluing down, then you are ready to display your new table. the support.
supplies that we're going to need for this beautiful canopy. Now I'm going to be using sheer panels. Um, I've got these at Big Lots or at Walmart, I can't remember which, but in this whatever color that you want. We're gonna be using this 14 inch wreath form from the Dollar Tree, and I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do with this. You'll need a pair of scissors, some heat and bond, because this is gonna be a no-sew project. Also some satin ribbon, color to match your shears. And also you're going to be needing florals. Now I have a bunch of florals here. I am probably not gonna use every single one, but I have been picking these up for a minute now. So now on these shears, they have a wider hem at one end, with a pocket in it, of course, and they also have a smaller hem at the other end of it. It also is a pocket, but what we're going to be doing with these is we're gonna definitely use the larger end um, hem area, and we're gonna take it and, of course, lay it out. Now, don't judge my ironing board here. I've had it for a minute. I need a new cover, but this is gonna help me quite a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut um, this hem open at the very, very end. And we're just going to take and, you know, just evenly cut it all the way from one end to the other. Once we get that cut, we're going to flip it back. And here is where my particular <laughs> ironing board cover is coming in handy. It has these straight lines on it. So I'm going to use this to my advantage. Um, you can definitely make sure that you measure um, exactly how far you want it, but you want, you know, a good inch opening from the natural hem of these shears to where you're going to be placing your heating bond. Now, I'm going to, you know, just lay this down. This is so simple to work with, guys. You just lay it where you want it to go, and it has this, this sticky stuff on both sides that is activated by your iron. If you've never used it before, this is actually a life changer. Now I know how to sew, <laughs> but I love this no-sew stuff. So basically I'm just taking my hot iron, no steam, and I'm just pressing where the heat and bond is to activate the sticky stuff. And once it cools down, guys, it's stuck. It is there and it has created that pocket. Now here's what we're going to do with our uh, wreath. You see I have this single, you know, metal little ring here. Where I got this from, and you can have multiples by doing this, I took a pair of, um, basically, of wire cutters, and I've used that first ring for another project, and I'll make sure I link it up above for you. But you're just going to cut right at each one of those brace sections. And guys, you have a ring. You have an, a, an awesome ring to be used for those ring wreaths, which I will, like I said, I will link that above for you, or something like this. And guys, it, it's so simple. Now it will have those little, a little bit of a knobby kind of place where you cut it apart, but it's real easy to work with. And of course, you're gonna need two sets of these shears, two shears, not two sets. You're gonna need two shear panels for this canopy. And you're just gonna slide it on and work it around. And like I said, you kinda of have to work it around those little knobbies, but guys, it works perfectly. And we're gonna go on and put the second one on there as well. Doing the same thing by making sure that your seam is to the inside of the ring and you'll just slide it and work it around. Now that we have our shear panels on, we're just gonna take where we had cut it and we're going to just overlap it slightly and just simply using some masking tape and I'm just gonna take a couple of pieces and wrap it around and make sure that it's good and secure and won't come apart. So now we're just going to kind of fluff this up a little bit and we're ready to put on our ribbon to be able to hang it. Now naturally you have the two open ends where both of the panels kind of meet on it. And that's going to be two points where you are going to add your ribbon. 
But now, of course, the other two points are not open, so we're going to have to um, just easily cut some slits down into the fabric. But you're only going to go down to where it exposes the little hanger, the little wire that's in there, the hoop. And you just want to go down just far enough for that. You don't want to cut past the hoop because then you get into the main part of your shear and that then it can rip. So now we're going to just cut down in there and once we get our little opening there on both sides, then of course we will be ready to add our, um, to add our ribbons to it. And it's going to, it's so simple because then of course you'll have four points for your ribbon. Now I measured out 24 inches on the first piece of ribbon and just using it to cut the other three. And you can of course adjust that according to your, um, how far you want your canopy to hang down or what, you know, or so on and so forth. So let me show you a little tip here when you're putting on some, any kind of ribbon or even just tying bows or anything like that. When you take your ribbon and you tie your first tie on there, tying it tight, then you're going to loop around and of course bring in your second tie for the knot, but don't pull it all the way. Take some hot glue and dab it right down there on top of your first tie. And then when you pull it tight and it will hold it and keep it from coming untied. So as you see, it's a little floppy, but that's okay because this is where we're going to place our florals. So with our ribbon, we're going to take and just tie all four of them together into a little knot at the top and that's where you will be hanging it from. So now it's time to add our florals and guys, this is however you want these to look. Now, of course, I do use a little bit of a strategy and I take in with any kind of floral arrangement that I do, I start out with my larger flowers first and then I kind of scale it down from there. I go to the medium sized flowers and then filling in with smaller flowers and then what I call accent flowers, that would be like your baby's breath or any little sprigs of, of floral types things. And then I go in and place in my greenery. Now it's different for each person, but this is just what I found works for me because then I can take my greenery and I can fill in any of the dead spots or whatever. So now it's time to decorate, guys. Um, what I'm doing here, of course, is we're starting out by placing our sweet new grandbaby's name on the wall. And of course, her name is gonna be Sailor Kate. We are so excited and can't wait for her to join us at the end of August. And guys, these little paper flowers that I'm placing up here, um, I made these and I have made larger paper flowers. I made those for Harper. And if I've got that tutorial and I'll make sure that I link that for you up in the iCards. But if you guys are interested in how I made these smaller ones, make sure you comment down below and let me know. And I'd be happy to do a tutorial for you. So we're just doing that. And of course we found these cute little flower hangers we're placing. And of course here's one of the hacks that I have over on my Instagram. So make sure you check that out. Show you how to do that. We're placing this sweet picture we found at Hobby Lobby. It says, beautiful girl, you can do amazing things. So guys, I had to include this because take a look who made a guest appearance. <laughs> she had to stick her little head in there and of course I was messing with them and like, mm-hmm, I see you down there. But of course my daughter had to get hers in there as well saying hi to you guys. So <laughs> I thought this was super cute. <laughs> And me, I'm up here on the ladder trying to hang these silly sheer curtain things that we found. <laughs> well guys, finishing touches, I'm putting the canopy up, and here is this beautiful nursery. We are so excited and we can't wait to meet this sweet, sweet baby that's coming. 
that I can snuggle both of my sweet loves and give them kisses and just, um, we had such fun creating this nursery. Here are the supplies that you're going to need for the first project. Then we're gonna need a picture frame with all of the stuff removed. We're also gonna need just a piece of uh, copy paper and of course a piece of foam board, some ribbon, and I'm gonna be using Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory to paint the frame. We're gonna need of course a paintbrush, some scissors, a utility knife, and then I'm also going to be using this boxwood garland, wired garland that I got from Target's Dollar Spot a year or so ago. So you can use any kind of garland, ribbon, anything that you want to wrap with. So first we're going to take our piece of copy paper and we're just going to fold it in half. And like we did when we were kids to make the perfect heart, you're going to just trace out half of the heart shape. Of course, making it however big you want it for your piece. Then, of course, we're just going to cut it out. And what I wind up doing is I also am going to cut out the inside of this heart. I already have one done here for you. And basically, we're going to use this as a template on our foam cord board. So now we're just going to take this and trace it out on our foam cord board and using a pencil we're going to do that and then take our X-Acto knife and cut it along those lines that we traced out. Once we get it cut out of course we're going to be ready to paint that and then set it aside. So now that we've got it cut out, it doesn't have to be perfect because like I said, we are going to paint it and then we're gonna be wrapping it with this garland. Now I'm gonna paint it green, but I didn't have any green, so of course we're gonna use yellow and blue, make green. So we'll get that mixed up and paint the front and the back and along the sides. Now that we have it painted, we're just going to set it side, aside and let it dry. So now we're gonna take some needle nose pliers and remove those little metal pieces that hold the backing in on the frame, and then it'll be ready to paint. So now we're just going to take our ivory chalk paint and we're gonna put two coats on this and letting them dry in between each coat. Make sure that you get all the way around the sides, on the outside and on the inside. Now we're gonna let that, set that aside on our first coat and we're just going to go ahead and begin to wrap the heart. Now this is, I'm doing it in small pieces, makes it a lot easier to bring through the middle and get it completely wrapped. Now that we have that done, I just want to give you a little crafter's tip. If you're like me and a little impatient, on my second coat, I'm going to use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Now that that's dry, we are ready to take uh, the ribbon that you want to use and be able to attach it to the frame. And basically, I'm going to measure out 24 inch piece of ribbon two times. So basically two 24 inch pieces of ribbon. 
and deciding which the front or the back side that I want to use of the ribbon and then we're just going to attach it to the back side on either side of the top of the heart. Once we've got the ribbon attached to the back, we're just going to kind of eyeball it into place there and we're getting ready to tie our ribbon to the top of the picture frame. And on the back side of this, we're going to just glue down the back side of the ribbon and then we'll flip it back over and go ahead and just tie a knot into the front. Now I'm going to create just a very simple bow, making two loops and then just bringing them around and making the little bow with the ribbon, the two loops of ribbon, and then just adjusting it to the size that you would like to have at the top of each side of your heart. the size bow that I'm using for this and so now we're ready to just you can trim your ribbon if you want to you can leave it there it's totally up to you make it your own we're just going to put a little dab of hot glue and glue it to the top of each side so definitely we'll do two bows on either side of your the top of your heart And that's what it looks like. I think it turned out so stinking cute. I love the way that this buffalo gingham check ribbon looks here. So here are the supplies you're gonna need for project number two. This is a little farm sweet farm sign that I got at the Dollar Tree a while back ago. It has the little galvanized piece and some burlap on it. I'm also going to be using 100% acetone nail polish remover with some cotton balls. And then on my silhouette, I created February with a heart and, and the number 14. So real simple here, we're going to just take cotton ball with some of the nail polish remover and easily remove that uh, writing on the front, cleaning it up with a little bit of paper towel. And then once we've got it good and clean, we're just going to apply our February 14. Now you can use any kind of stickers. Dollar Tree has them. You can also buy them at Walmart and create this without even having to have a silhouette or a Cricut vinyl cutter. Another cute little sign that can be used anywhere in your decor. And for our third project, we're just going to go out back and pick out some twigs and get some type of vase. You can use the glass vases that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I found this at the thrift store and I painted it, had it on hand for a while now. And then I've also had these foam glitter hearts that you get in a pack at the Dollar Tree. I've had these for a while as well. And your hot glue gun. Basically, we are just going to take these little foam hearts, put a dab of glue on the back of them, and then just put them all over these twigs. You can put as many as you want, as few as you want. You really and truly can make this your own. Once you get it like you like it, then just stick them down in the vase that you have chosen and voila, you will have the cutest, most simple decor piece for Valentine's Day.
thank you for hanging out with me for my best 20 of 2020 and know that I am grateful for each and every one of you. And I want to wish all of you a happy new year and I pray that it is a prosperous one for each and every one of you. So you guys have a blessed day and always remember to keep looking up because that's where it all is. I'll see you in the new year.